pleasure to meet y'all at last. And I've come back here on Why Is That. I have taken a little more than a week off from Why Is That, but now I feel like I should start getting back into that. So, there's actually have been a lot of questions in the last week and a half that you have sent me, and I managed to write them down on a post-it note, and I will review them off and answer them all one by one. But here's today's question, which comes from another Twitter user, and this is actually a pretty decent question for the first time in, I'd say, nearly a month's worth of questions that I have managed to get. So he asked me, why is that you always want to keep your content all original? Now, considering how I said that's a decent question, that actually has a bit of an answer to it that tends to go way back to actually the first couple of years that I've had my channel around 2009, 2010, somewhere around that time period. But first, let's just get on to the backstory and then we can study forth what the answer can be. So 2009 and 2010, which is actually the first, second, third years that I have been on YouTube, it was around those times at which I figured, hey, why not try to do something about with my life? And so, with that, I had gotten myself a camera that my mother bought me. It was kind of an older camera at first, but I did figure out how to use it pretty well. It had a joystick on top, and it had itself some pretty decent quality selections. And it was a digital camera too, so this way I wouldn't have to deal with what kind of hassles that film would have. The film cameras from back then, in the 80s and 90s, I guess they probably weren't too easy to handle, but at the same time, I am actually feeling that with today's filming, Digital cameras are not always going to play a good role because the one disadvantage that I really would not want to happen anytime would be the fact that with digital cameras, whenever you delete certain photos or videos, they're just gone forever. There's really no bringing them back. But with film, you can still use the negatives to create new copies. And of course, even though that is a lengthy process, that is actually quite an advantage considering how modern day technology only wipes out things clean and with the old technology that we've had back then throughout the last 40 years or so we could just simply restore the pictures that we've accidentally or intentionally destroyed we can just recreate them using a dark room but we don't really have much of that anymore and so that's just why I film today relies on the use of digital cameras in ways to have much better quality and a lot more film to be generated compared to just your film rolls. I had enough about that. That's kind of just a big historical statement that had nothing to do with it. So 2009-2010, of course I had a digital camera then. There was an Olympus camera. It was green in color. And its camera quality was not very good. I'll tell you that right now. But there were a couple videos that I managed to get off of that. I mean, I had multiple cameras from the last 10 years. My most recent camera, not including my Samsung Galaxy, would be the Sony Handycam, which I paid $179 for at Best Buy, at least a few months back. But here's the thing though, 2010 became actually quite a big year for me when it came to doing some YouTube skits and projects. Though, as I probably said earlier back then, that most of the videos I've made up until 2014 are gone. They're gone, as in they're deleted. They cannot really be brought back. Unless, of course, I had copies of them from some time ago, which I no longer own the computer that I used to store all of these copies of my older, older, older projects and skits on there. But that's probably not big of a deal because I can always recreate them or reenact them, which probably wasn't actually very hard for me to do. It won't really be hard for me to do it anyways. But onward back to 2010 was where I had myself multiple cameras, including an Olympus camera and another camera of which that I mentioned before it had a joystick on it and it could flip upside down 360 actually. It could move 360. It could go forward or backward, and the lens is pointed this way or towards me. 
but what it could also do is that it could also save up some extra stuff and the battery is also rechargeable and that was probably a big advantage for me at the time now considering how some batteries can actually be replaceable if they're dead of course but back then you could use wired docking stations to put your batteries on and nowadays you can just keep the batteries attached and have a camera cord poking out of the side that is actually what my Sony Handycam does it has a cord poking out from the side with a USB port on the end of it and it can plug into any USB ports into it and that's pretty much it right now but after 2010 though was where the Olympus and the other camera which I still cannot find out exactly what it was no longer came to be in 2011 2012 there were a couple other digital camcorders that we use with the side that films out and shows what the lens is recording. And of course, from that point on, I managed to get cameras like those. I mean, I no longer use the traditional digital cameras that could also take pictures, nor would I be able to use any of the other more bulky type of cameras. That square one I mentioned that could do 360 also was kind of bulky, aside from having itself a fairly decent quality for being a much older camera. But in 2011, 2012, 2013, all the way up to today even, was where I had the camcorder with the style that which it could flip out 90 degrees away from the camera side and it could show you what it was recording. But what it could also do is that it could also show if it's zooming, it could also show you if something else is playing. Cameras like those really is what I intended on using for probably the rest of my time. But up until today with the Sony Handycam, it was not really that big of a deal. I mean, even though it's the cheapest camera I could find in the market today, it really doesn't have too good of a quality. I'm going to be honest about that. It sometimes just went very out of focus or it just kept on blurring or it kept on going fuzzy. I mean, in certain lighting, it tends to not do very well in terms of filming. While filming myself, I mean, I have filmed a lot of myself with that particular camera. Back then, with other cameras out there, I had a JVC ahead. I can't really seem to remember. It probably was a Samsung, or it could have even been a Canon or something. It more likely have been a Samsung, because the Canons are more expensive today than they used to be. The Canon VIX C8 is at least $400 nowadays and go higher in the RX series Vixia, it's much more expensive than that. But nowadays I'm thinking that the Sony Handycam that I use probably most of the time that I am filming myself and uploading it to my channel probably is enough for me to get by at the moment. But considering how like I've said, the quality on the Sony Handycam that I use a lot isn't really too well. I probably will consider upgrading it to something that's at least $500 or even more than that. It may be worth the expense to have myself such great quality. And of course, not everybody wants to have bad quality on their cameras or their radios. I mean, I've got plenty of other stuff that has pretty bad quality, but I am going to be donating it or I'm just going to kind of scrap it really because bad quality is just something that does not matter to me. Good quality is something that we're always looking for and I guess not everyone around here just wants to just deal with bad quality. The music today that we listen to has pretty bad quality in stereo or anything that we use. I mean, the quality of it, be it studio or anything else related to that, is just crap. A lot of quality in terms of today's music is just crappy. Whereas five years ago, it was probably much better. I mean, quality still had lots to do with what I've been doing as a YouTuber for at least 10 years now. And now that it's been more than 10 years, it's been over 10 years and three months even. July 11 of 2008, that was the time which I had my YouTube channel started for the first time. And of course, just like what happened to my Twitter account, I mean, there's probably a question on my Twitter account based on what happened to that as well. But my YouTube channel's account creation date 
had also been altered. I don't know if that's supposed to be relevant to the question, but it's just topics that I usually want to bring up that's just alongside the main topic that I really tend to bring up because these are topics that I really want to bring up alongside the main topic. But now, that's pretty much off my chest for right now. Let's just get back to the main topic. So what happened is that after 2011, 2012, 2013, I mean, possibly around 2013 was where I'm thinking that could have been a Samsung camcorder that my parents bought and I did use it a lot for other home videos related stuff but I did use it mostly for some of the earliest YouTube videos I've made in the 2010s by far but after 2012 or even 2013 the time that my family went to Florida for the third time that camcorder might have been lost. I don't even know what happened with that Samsung camcorder. I don't even know if it was a Samsung or anything, but I might as well just call it a Samsung since I cannot really picture exactly what it was at the time that we had it. But we just lost that camcorder. So after 2013, yes, it was definitely 2013. After 2013 was where we bought a JVC camcorder and that had, I guess, not too bad of a quality compared to the other one. I mean, the other camera's quality was actually pretty good, but I really couldn't say the same much for the JVC camera. I mean, it was cheaper than the Samsung, which would explain why that its quality was a bit more fuzzy in a way, but it also tended to kind of just darken out on me as if it automatically adjusted its brightness on me. I did use that JVC a lot during 2014 all the way up to 2016 even. Yeah, by the end of 2016 was where I stopped because then I would start using my phone or anything that I could use as substitutes really because the JVC was mostly meant for the family. It wasn't necessarily meant for me to use on my channel, though I did use it for about three solid years, 2014 to 2016. Until around the very end of 2016 was where I started to use other phones and other kinds of equipment I could use to record videos and have them uploaded to my channel. But the big picture, the big step that it really took forth was in April of 2017 when I realized that I was getting another brand new phone. Though this brand new phone, just like some of the other phones I had back then, that one actually lasted much, much longer than any of the other smartphones that I've had in my lifetime, yet the LG actually ended up in its little dude as well. And currently what I am using is a Samsung Galaxy S7 Edge, and I did just buy a brand new case for it and a new pop socket for it, so this way I can pretty much just keep it looking swell and fresh, and it does actually have some color and some zing to it in terms of the color's spectrum. But anyways, today, all I got is the Samsung Galaxy S7 Edge and the Sony Handycam. Those are the two primary methods of filming that I tend to use nowadays. Though, I don't know, I mean, the JVC camera is not lost or anything, but I kind of just gave it away to my parents because I felt like I was all done with the use of it because of its quality and it also kept on automatically adjusting its brightness and likewise so this way I just couldn't really deal with it anymore so I just pretty much just gave it back to my parents oh and there's also one more thing my mother at one point bought a Fujifilm camera it's a professional photography based camera but it also does a video pretty well too back in May of 2015 she bought it I mean that was when I was still using the JVC camcorder but she bought the Fujifilm camera and I did actually use the Fujifilm camera a lot throughout the rest of 2016 for the most part and mostly throughout the rest of 2017 until she turned 40. On her 40th birthday last August was where I gave the Fujifilm camera back to her as a birthday present and this would come up to the point at which that I would start using my LG as a primary camera based on my use of filming myself uploading it to my channel, but eventually, as you probably already seen the vlog I made on it, the LG K8 2017, that was his full name according to the manufacturer, it suffered a massive trauma, I mean, a failed screen replacement operation is what I commenced on it after 
I dropped it on a bridge at one point and a third of the entire screen managed to shatter. And little shards started falling out of it, exposing the interior mechanics. And I ended up covering it up with electric tape, though I don't know how much of a difference that would make. So eventually within the next three to six months was where I decided I want to go ahead and replace the screen because the screen itself could break at any time other than where it already is. So what I intended on doing is that I bought myself a screen replacement kit which came with some screwdrivers and it came with a prying tool and some screws of course, or very little screws that are much smaller than this. Could have been a lot of this right now. And I just went ahead and went with the operation with an instructional video I found on YouTube. And it was professional level, so this way I wasn't going to be tricked or fooled or put aside by spammers or anybody else like that. And I just went ahead and went with the operation. And it took me less than 10 minutes to do most of the work. But the big part of the work was getting the screen away from the PCU. The CPU itself was bonded together with super strong adhesive. Both the screen and the CPU unit were both bonded with super type of adhesive. And what I ended up doing was I ended up getting a heat gun, a hair dryer, anything like that to try to separate the screen and the CPU unit. But eventually, that's kind of where the CPU unit just gave way and it just turned white. It was no longer working the way it used to be before I did the operation. And so, eventually, I decided to call it quits. Though, I managed to spare the case, as well as the battery. The battery could be donated to someone who would want an extra battery for their LG K8 2017, but then again, it had been charged multiple, multiple, multiple times. So I couldn't really tell how many more times you could charge the battery that I managed to spare out of the wreckage without it dying permanently. And then to the point in which that I would have to require it to be replaced with a brand new fresh battery. But then again, considering how it has been months since I did that operation, and eventually I took the remains outside and I started filming a bit of a ceremony for it, a funeral ceremony for it, because I've developed quite a big relation with that LG. For more than a year and a quarter, that's how long the LG lasted. I even gave it a name. Though, I decided until during the funeral ceremony that I was filming at the time that I brought the remains outside and started filming, I gave it the name Tyranny. And of course, Tyranny is probably not always a super unique name out there, but I just simply gave that LG the name Tyranny. And nowadays, I'm relying on both my Samsung Galaxy S7 Edge and my Sony Handycam to do any of the work for me. Based on the fact that with my YouTube career still cruising around, and my subscriber count has actually made a little jolt upwards. At least two more have managed to subscribe to me in just as little as 10 hours at one point last month even. But anyways though, that's pretty much it. Now we're in the present day where the Sony Handycam and the Galaxy S7 Edge are the only two primary methods of filming that I intend to use. To record videos and have them upload to my channel. And of course I still have the Magix Movie Edit Pro 2016 software that I use to edit my videos, of which I am considering upgrading them within the next year. Though it's likely not going to be for a little while because I found out the new addition to the Magix Movie Edit Pro series software lineup is actually more expensive than the one I bought. The one I bought was at least $40, but this newer one could be as much as $68. And I currently don't have that much money yet on Amazon or likewise. But here's the main answer to the question though. The main answer to the question is because I intend on keeping my content all original, and this is because of the fact that with the copyright law intact, there's just no telling what could happen to you. Your account could be banned for life, your account could be severed of its monetization, your account could have lots of other complications come in. 
And of course, the copyright law does have lots to do with the whole thing, but then again, considering how I've been following it, and I have not gotten copyright strikes for at least a couple years, then I'd say I might as well be in the clear. So this way, this would determine the fact that my channel is doing very well with keeping the content all original. It is not scrapping content from other movies. It is not reusing content that has been used within the last 15 years. It's only been using content that I have explicitly made on my own terms. But sometimes I am going to have assistance from other people to help me out with the content I make because sometimes there's just some particular angles that I want to have my video set at. And I am considering getting probably some other cameras around to film multiple angles in one single shot. But that's probably not going to happen for right now because I don't have much funds on me at the moment to be able to go out and buy something like that. And anyways though, that's pretty much it for right now. But if you want to see more, go down on my channel and if you want to hear more answers from here on why is that, make sure that you like, subscribe, comment. Follow me on social media and stay on the Hollywood side.